Welcome to episode 16 of the You Knitting with Lucy podcast. Uh, this is a podcast about knitting and whatever crafty, crafty stuff that I'm up to. Uh, Lucy is my cat who's under the bed right now as per the usual and I'm Abby. Uh, show notes for this episode will be in the down bar below as always and if you want to find me elsewhere on the social medias you can find me on Instagram as Le Jardin Fleur and on Ravelry as Long Ride Home. I think that was the smoothest intro I've ever done. Uh, for all returning subscribers, thank you so much for watching and for anyone checking me out that's new. Um, thanks for checking me out. Grab a drink, grab your yarn or whatever and uh, let's spend a little time together. These episodes are just quick sometimes. Uh, one take episodes, I don't do any editing, nothing fancy here, we're just hanging out. Um, I've got a cold brew that my husband so very nicely made for me that I've been slowly sipping on that I have with me, so maybe you have some coffee too. I'm not a coffee person, and over the last week I think I've become one, so I'm very happy to have that next to me. So I think I have a good episode for all of you. Um, I've got some a finished object, a sewing project to show you some acquisitions, which is unusual for me. Um, if you're not someone that's into watching lots of acquisitions, this is the podcast for you because I don't buy a lot of stuff. But I was just on vacation in Maine over the past week, so I have stuff that I bought because you gotta buy crafty souvenirs when you have the opportunity, right? So, um, yeah, let's get started. And I'm going to tell you about bit more about Maine later if you're interested. So uh, I have a knitting finished object to show you. I showed this as a work in progress that was pretty far along uh, in the last podcast. Um, let me tell you a little bit about it and then I will show it to you more. Um, so this is the Tensdale shawl by, ooh, I can't remember the designer's name, but it will be dumb blue. Um, this is a pretty large worsted weight graph worsted weight shawl that has kind of a simple graphic detail, um, which I'll show you obviously. Uh, I knit this out of a delicious yarn. I'm sorry if you can hear the noise in the background. I live in a department building and I always just hear people in the stairwell, so so do you now. And I can't edit, so someone's crying. I'm gonna talk through it, hopefully you don't really hear me hear them, I mean. So, um, oh my god, shut up. I'm recording a podcast, don't you know that? Okay, so I knit this out of Elsa Wool. Their woolen spun worsted weight. Did I say that right? Their worsted weight Cormo, but the woolen spun version. And this is like one of their mid-tone grays, which is basically just a gray-brown. Gray is a little misleading if that's what you're looking for. This wouldn't be the yarn. Um, when I, what else I want to say? I got really off track with the people in the stairwell and outside, but they're gone now. So let's recenter, shall we? Um, so when I was showing this last, I was talking about how it was sort of difficult to knit with, um, with my hands, but I made it through and it was so worth it. It blocked out so beautifully. So let me show it to you. I think, oh, this is what I want to say. I knit this out of three skeins of Yasa wool, which comes in 100 gram skeins, which are really quite large. I think I have, I have some left over the third skein, so it wasn't quite three skeins. I have probably about a ball that big, which versus the balls are like this big when you first wind them up. Anyway, so. Here it is, and hopefully with the lighting, it might be blowing it all a bit, so you should be able to see some of the details. Yeah. So you see that it has these three triangles, or, or three diamond shapes in different sizes across the middle, and then a about three inch uh, garter border. So it's a triangular shawl. This is so yummy. This is the biggest shawl that I've ever made. I've never also made a worsted weight shawl. It was quite an adventure blocking it. I have some photos on my Instagram and Ravelry if you'd like to see that. 
Um, let me move the coffee, because that would suck to get some of this getting and dipped in it. But, um, fortunately I don't really have space behind me to, like, move back. Um, uh, let's turn you this way. There we go. So, oops, drop some yarn. So, you can see it is pretty long in the back. Um, I made this to be a hang out on the couch or hang out in the office and drape over my shoulders when I need some extra warmth and that's definitely what it is. Um, the pattern designer shows it. You can wear it kind of like draped over the shoulder like this, which is cute. I don't know if I can pull that off. Um, so that would be sort of how it is. I want to get a shawl pen. I'm meaning to get that for a while. I think that would help with kind of doing this sort of thing. Um, you couldn't really wear it like a, a lot of people tend to wear shawls. And like I wear my smaller shawls where you kind of do one of these things and little bandana style. It's, it's too big for that, although some people might do that, I don't know. But um, it is gorgeous. It's, honestly, it's just perfect. Um, I had really been off of shawl knitting for a long time. I don't think I've knit a shawl before this one. Um, probably since last winter, not this past winter, but the winter before. I, this past winter I knit mainly garments. Um, so this was like, this was one of those projects where it was exactly what I wanted to be knitting, exactly when I wanted to be knitting it with every piece of the puzzle was there. It checked, all, checked off all my boxes, um, except for the part where it was a little bit difficult to knit with, but it was so worth it. Um, so I'd really recommend this pattern if you want something that's just simple TV knitting. Um, but has a little bit of interest in, you know, the pattern with the graphic. Um, and depending on the kind of yarn that you use, those garter, um, if you want to say rectangles, but I know that's not what it is, diamonds will probably show up a little bit more. Um, probably in a worsted spun yarn, like a Quince and Co. Lark, those diamonds would pop a little bit more because the stitch definition would be a little bit higher, but I just really love it in this yarn. Um, so if you want to knit a big, cozy, comfy shawl, uh, I'd highly recommend this pattern. She gives instructions for if you want to make it even bigger. Just keep in mind you'd have to get more yarn. Um, it would be really easy to make this one bigger and be even cozier. Um, so I'm really, really, really happy with it. And just like that morally goodness from the Cormo um, with flecks of lighter beige. I mean, the this camera is terrible, but there's there's a variation. It's just, it's really, 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 really. I love it. It's like a teddy bear. I'm squeezing it right now. Ugh. So now I'm kind of put off from shawl knitting because I just made a shawl. And I have a lot of yarn <laughs> to make shawls out of, which I'm going to show you. So that was maybe not the best planning, but I uh, love that. Great, great pattern. Simple, but just really good, yummy, delicious knitting. Probably a weird thing to knit in the middle of the summer, but um, yeah, if you're looking for a new project, it'll probably be done in fall. Oh, this was something to say. Whoops getting caught on something over here. If you are looking to participate in Jacqueline Salem's Hipster Cow, this exact project will do it. Um, I was almost done with this when she announced it, and I was like, I qualify completely because this pattern has less than 30 designs, and it is a yarn that I've never knit with before. So if you've never knit with the Elsa wool and, and you or like this pattern, I think it's still under 30 um, projects, and you'd like to participate in the Hipster Cow by Jacqueline Salem from the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast, you should do that for me, because I was just 
a little bit frustrated because I have never participated in a knit along before because I, I never, anything I want to knit never qualifies for whatever reason. Maybe it's the time of it that I started too early like that one or I don't really want to knit something that meets those qualifications but this was the first time that I was like, I have all the, I checked all the boxes. That, I got it, but the timeline was wrong. So if I had started that a few months later, then I probably would have been okay. So that being said, if you're looking for a pattern for that cow, do that shawl. Can't go wrong. Um, I don't have any knitting works in progress. Oh, I do. Hold on. Bear with me. Okay, so in an effort to have something to knit on while I was in Maine, which I, I really didn't end up knitting in Maine because I really wasn't that interested in this project, basically, um, I started another project last week with some leftover yarn that I had. I don't think I'm going to continue it, but uh, I'll show you what I have so far. That there's really not much to show you. Um, this is uh, the Antiquity Mitts by Alicia Plummer, I think her name is. It'll be, once again, in the down bar. They are this fingerless mitts. Ooh, this is coming up like real jelly. Fingerless mitts pattern where it has these almost like floral-like stitch pattern. Oh, it's so blown out. Ah. It's just totally, this is a very, very saturated red to begin with. This is Quince & Co's Chickadee, which is their sport weight yarn, and their Peaks Ferry colorway, which is an amazing, bright, corally red, but it just goes jelly in photos. Um, but I think you can see the stitch pattern that it has these like little flowers, little almost butterfly-like things, and that goes up the palm. Um, so this is the wrist portion basically. Um, I'm knitting it on size 5 DPNs. Oh, there's people in the hallway again, I'm sorry. Size 5 DPNs and this is a sport weight once again. And uh, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue this for a couple reasons. First of all, I'm a little bit afraid I don't have quite enough yarn. Um, I had used this in my peak, not my peaks fairy, that's the name of the colorway. Um, what is that? A cowl that I knit. I can't remember the name of it, but um, you can find it in my Ravelry Projects page. Um, it's a blue and white slip stitch patterned infinity cowl with, I use this as like a red striping around the top and the bottom of the cowl. Um, so I use this for like two rows in that cowl, but it, that, those were long rows. So I have about 45, I think, grams total. And I think I need a little bit more. So I knit the cuff just slightly less. I do have small hands, so I think it would be okay. But uh, I'm just not sure. And also, I really hate working with DPNs. And I think with this pattern, this pattern, it would be kind of confusing to do this on Magic Loop, which I don't particularly like doing anyway. So, this probably won't really go much further, but maybe. I don't have any other projects right now planned or that I have a desire to work on right now, so maybe that will be continued. But that's the only other work in progress that I have. So, now I'm going to talk about sewing. Um, do we have the, yes, okay. Now I'm going to talk about sewing. If you're not interested in sewing, maybe skip a little bit further on and we'll get to the yarny acquisitions, uh, but, uh, you know, probably be a few minutes on sewing. Hope that's okay. So, no pun intended, so. Some of you may remember... Back in April, so a few episodes ago, maybe last episode or two episodes ago, I, I don't know. I decided that I really wanted to try garment knitting. I mean, I'm garment sewing, I'm sorry. And I had made two 
muslins of the willow tank. Here is the second one that I did. Um, willow tank is the willow tank pattern is by Greenline Studio. This was my muslin. I didn't have enough of the muslin fabric, so I used some scrap blue fabric. So I sort of two toned tank top. <laughs> um, so this is a fairly simple, supposed to be beginner friendly uh, tank top pattern. Um, it has bust starts, uh, bias tape facing around the neckline and the um, arm holes to finish it. And um, so I had made this, two of these muslins and I had busted my ass making them. Um, over a couple weekends, and then I lost all desire to actually make an actual pet, um, willow tank. Um, one, because I wasn't in love with the fabric that I had ordered for it, and two, because even after the second muslin, this didn't really fit properly. Um, the bust starts needed to be raised higher, I felt. The neckline gapped a lot. I had looked up how I looked up. You can do like a narrow chest or hollow chest adjustment. So I wanted to try doing that. Um, I thought it was still a bit too wide at the bottom. So I wanted to make. I want to if I'm going to make this pattern again. I would need to make a fair amount of adjustments, which I think would really kind of require another muslin, but. I have no desire to make a third muslin on this because it's fairly time intensive for a new sewer. Um, this took hours upon hours. So given that I don't like my fabric that much, then maybe it's not too much of a loss to maybe pick one and just try and make that a wearable muslin. Um, so I may do that eventually, but this kind of thing had been on hold for several months. So I just was, was kind of frustrated with it. So uh, recently I came across Sonia Phillips of 100 Acts of Sewing, oops, sorry, pattern shirt number one. Um, and while I was in Maine, I had, before I was going to Maine, I had heard about this fabric store in Rockland, Maine, which is called Clementine Fabric. Um, it is the fabric store of choice of Sarah from the Fiber Trek podcast. Um, so I decided I really wanted to go to that store. So, and then I had heard about the shirt number one pattern, and I figured, you know what? I'm going to go to that store. I'm going to pick out the fabric that I definitely like because I'll see it in person. Um, <laughs> don't know about that. We'll talk about that. Um, so I'll pick, pick out the fabric that I really like. And I'll buy that pattern because you can really only buy, well, no, you can order it online, um, but uh, I knew that they carried that pattern, so I figured I'll buy the pattern, I'll get the fabric, and, you know, I'll start fresh with a new project. And let me show you the pattern. Um, not sure where the booklet is, but this is the shirt number one. So... It's a very simple top. It's quite wide. There is no bust starts, which when I realized that, I thought, yeah, that's going to be it for me uh, because of my bust start issue with the willow tank. And um, it doesn't have to be fitted that carefully because it's meant to be sort of a loosey-goosey, flowy sort of top. The willow tank... If it doesn't fit quite right, it looks weird. So, and there goes the fire department. Sorry about that. I live right next door to um, a firehouse, so that goes off several times a day if you can hear that. So, um, I decided in my head, I'm going to make a shirt number one. Let's start fresh. F the willow tank for now, and we'll go from there. So, I went to Clementine. And I picked up the pattern, and I picked up fabric, which I'm going to show you, and I picked up muslin. And I came home, and um, I made the muslin. 
So I'm going to show it to you. I'm wearing it right now, actually. And I'm really thankful to the Clementine, um, I'm sorry, the, the clerk that was at Clementine who was really, really, really nice. If you ever do go to that fabric store, um, it was a woman with short, dark hair, and I don't know her name, but she was really, really nice and sweet and friendly and helpful and sweet and kind. Um, and that just made the whole experience great because I was kind of, I was anxious to go into a fabric store. I've never been in a fabric store before. I don't know how it works. Um, I get anxious about kind of weird things sometimes, especially things that are new to me. So I was anxious to go in there. I felt totally like a fish out of water. So when you have someone like that, that was really nice and friendly, it just makes the whole experience so much better. So, um, she helped me pick out some fabric and... Um, what I was going to say is I'm really thankful to her because when I asked for some muslin, she asked me, do you want, um, unbleached muslin, which is, you know, like the, the beige muslin color we're used to seeing, or do you want bleached white muslin? And I would have said unbleached because I thought that's like kind of like what the standard is, but I kind of was just like, no, oh, whatever you think. And so she picked out the white which I'm, I'm thankful for because I would never in a million years wear this color. It just looks terrible with my skin tone. But the whites, if this looks normal, which I'm not sure, you'll, you'll tell me, <laughs> it's sort of wearable for me. So, that being said, I made the muslin. Um, I made it in the size small, which is for the 35 inch bust. And... The pattern indicates, which I'm really thankful for because that was part of what the confusion was and why I made two different sizes that neither of them fit me correctly with the willow tank. It indicates whether, it tells you which size to make based on your actual bust me measurement, not based on the finished garments measurements, which is really helpful. So it's not like size two, size four, size six, and this results in this measurement, which is what the willow tank is, which is standard. So not blaming the willow tank, but it really just says what size to choose based on your bust measure measurement. And she says that in the instruction booklet as well, pick the size based on your, your full bust measure measurement. So my full bust measurement is 35. So I picked the small. The extra small is a 32 inch bust, which is um, quite a bit smaller than mine. Um, I'm considering when I do this again whether I should do the size extra small because it seems a bit voluminous to me, but that may also be because this is a fabric. It's a cotton basically quilting fabric that is a bit stiff, so it doesn't have much drape. So I have an, another fabric that has a little more drape. I think it may not make as much of a difference. I don't know if this is like too oversized. I don't typically wear oversized clothing, so it's a little bit confusing. But um, I'm considering maybe tweaking the pattern and then that's where I end up wanting to make another muslin and my brain starts going crazy. So rewinding for a second, let me show you what I did. <laughs> so um, once again, let me shift you. This way, move the yarn. And I posted some more views on Instagram this morning, but um, here, let me just turn you, sorry. Okay, so this is the muslin. This is the part that like, I don't know if that's too big right there. Um, I did the length of the extra small, by the way. So it's a little bit short, so it's wide. And then I just think that looks kind of weird to me, like how wide that goes back. But I think it may be, like I said, it was in a drapier fabric that it wouldn't kind of do that as much. So that's what it looks like. And I kind of think it's wearable because it's white. I don't hate it. I'm not gonna lie. So if you're gonna spend lots of time on a muslin, it's not the worst idea to go with the white bleached muslin because then that doesn't look as much like your regular muslin. At least to me. I'm, this may look ridiculous. I have no idea. Like expert sewists may be saying to themselves, uh, Abby, you look crazy. Uh, so let me know if I do. <laughs> um, 
So a couple more things to say after having made this shirt. I would, I'm going to take a sip of my cold brew. Give me a second so I can collect my thoughts. I'm just waiting to like dribble this all the way down. So I'm going to sip this a little bit slowly. So certainly after having made the willow tank, I knew how to do things kind of like the bias tape neckline. Um, I knew how to lay a pattern on top of the fabric correctly. I knew how to trace and cut out pattern pieces. I mean, those are all things that sound a little bit simple, but to me, when I did the willow tank, I just like was, I didn't, I'd never done that before. So I didn't know what I was doing, if I was doing it correctly. So certainly those things went smooth, smoother. That being said, this experience was so much smoother and easier than the willow tank. Forgetting and putting aside the rest of those things. So for a couple reasons I would definitely recommend for a first garment to knit, not knit, um, sew the shirt number one over the willow tank top. Firstly because of the, the um, bust start thing, like I said there's no bust start so you don't have to kind of mess with that. Like I mentioned before about the fit being a bit oversized, it's more forgiving than the willow tank. Um, but uh, Two, three major things that make it easier beyond the fit issues. First thing is it's only one pattern piece that you have to cut out um, versus two of the willow tank, which is not a big deal, but it saves time. It's just simpler if this is your first time. Um, second thing is that you use bias tape, which you make out of either the same fabric that you made the shirt, which is what I did, or of a scrap fabric, and you use that to finish the neckline. Um, like I mentioned to you before, in the willow tank, the neckline is finished with the bias tape as well as the sleeves, or the, um, yes, yeah, that on the sleeves, um, the armholes. With this top, because it's a short sleeve shirt, only the neckline is with the bias tape, and the the short sleeves are hemmed, like a regular hem like you do at the bottom. So that just makes things a lot easier if you're a little bit overwhelmed by the idea of doing applied bias neckline or whatever. Um, it's a little bit easier to do that only in one part of the shirt versus three separate parts. Um, <clears throat> I went on her website to look up her instructions for doing the bias tape applied neckline stuff. That picture tutorial is a little bit lacking. Her instructions are a little bit lacking. But those two things combined plus my instructions from the Green Line Studio tank top, so the little tank, so props to the little tank there. Um, I actually was able to do that, and I found doing it this time to be, with her technique combined with Green Line Studios technique, to be really good. So um, if you make this top and you've never done that before, what I would recommend is I think Green Line Studios blog does also have a pictorial on how to do the applied bias neckline tape thing. So you can check that out as a resource. I think there's plenty of other resources online for that as well. Sip. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and, uh, ooh, half hour, okay. <clears throat> Let's get going. So I'm gonna show you the other fabric that I bought. I bought two fabrics. One I'm really not sure about for this top because, like I said, I think a drapier fabric is better. So I'll show you the one I'm not so sure about. Um, I'm also not so sure about this color. That's sort of what I was referencing before when I said that, oh, I'll, I'll see it in person. I'll know for sure that's what I want. But I, I think I tend to go, ooh, that's pretty, and then not really think about how it looks on me sometimes. So, um, yeah. So this is a linen cotton blend from Robert Kaufman. 
<clears throat> and it's a little bit of a thicker, heavier fabric. These are these two fabrics, I'm gonna show you this one a little bit in a second, are supposed to be the same amount, and maybe she messed up. They're supposed to be one and a half yards each. But this one had, is like so much more fabric than this one, than this one. So either this is much thicker or there's more of it, I'm not sure. Um, but it definitely feels thicker when I just compare like the hand of it. So this is a linen cotton blend. So there's that. <coughs> All right, sorry. I'm losing my voice also, so that's really not helping. <clears throat> okay. Um, and this is the one that I want to make it out of. And it's coming off really more saturated and darker on the camera. That's a little bit more accurate. It's sort of like a faded blue plaid. And it's 100% cotton. It's very drapey. It's thin. Um, I think it's also by Robert Kaufman. And I think this would make a really cute shirt number one. Um, and I think the drape of it will fit better. Um, the only thing is, is that I'm worried about sewing with this fabric on my current sewing machine. I think it might kind of eat it up. Um, so I am hoping to purchase a sewing machine or I am hoping to get one for my birthday, which was this weekend. <laughs> Happy 29. Um, so I may wait. I mean, I, I kind of have to take a break anyway, but it can't be too long. So I can still, I can keep in my head what I did here and remember the tips and tricks that I learned myself. Um, so I'm hoping to do that soon and I'm, I'm really excited about that. So I would 100% recommend this pattern. If you're interested in, in garment sewing and you're, I'm, you know, it's, it's new to you. Um, all right, so we're at 32 minutes. Um, hopefully I haven't been making Hopefully I'm making some sense. I feel like I've been acting a little bit crazy as usual. Let's get into some other acquisitions beyond the fabric back to yarn, if you're interested in yarn. There we go. So um, I went to a few yarn stores in Maine. Uh, I checked out Halcyon, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Halcyon Yarn in Bath, Maine. Um, I went to the Cashmere Goat. I think that's what it's called. I kind of stumbled upon that one. I wasn't planning on going. That was in Camden. And I went to the Swans Island Company store in Camden as well. Um, when I was in Maine last year, I went to Knitwit, Knitwit Yarn Store. So I basically I have gone to all the yarn places that I could find in that region. Um, Knitwit, I didn't go to this year. I wasn't there in a day in Portland that they were open. They're not open on Sundays or Mondays, but that's an awesome yarn store. They have all the Quince & Co. line if you're interested. If you're going to Maine and you're going to be in the area, that's one to check out. It's worth it. Um, Halcyon Yarn, I didn't get anything at. I just they didn't really have anything that I was particularly looking for. If I was going to be purchasing yarn, I wanted to purchase yarn that was Maine-focused, not something that I could easily order on yarn.com, even though I could probably get some of these on there, but was a main yarn. That was really what I was looking for. House Skin Yarns do, does have their own yarn line, but it just wasn't anything that I was looking for. That being said, if you're a spinner, they had a lot of spinning and weaving supplies. So uh, that might be one to check out if you are. Um, but uh, in Camden, like I said, I went into the Swans Island Company store and I went into the Cashmere Goat. So Last year, when I went to Maine and I went to Knitwit in Portland, I had purchased this yarn from Swans Island, which is the Natural Colors Collection um, Organic Merino Wool Fingering. This is a natural dyed. Um, these are all natural dyed yarns in this collection. This is the Lupine or Lupine, I'm not sure how to pronounce that colorway. Um, this is not showing it accurate at all. The, the, sorry, the light has faded even further or has darkened even further in the room. Since we started, it's looking black, but it's a, it's a very dark purple yarn. That's not helpful at all, but it's a purple 
Just let's pretend it's purple for a moment. And I never made anything with it, <laughs> um, clearly, because it's still in the skein. So when I went to the Swans Island Company store, um, I had in mind something that might go with this in a shawl. And I went a little bit crazy. <laughs> And I got their iCat collection watercolors yarn, and this is showing up way more saturated than it is. Um, and this is dyed with indigo, and it is the Indigo Natural colorway, number 128. So I got that. Worst representation of yarn colors ever right here. This is it. And I got um, this colorway. Oh gosh, this is like such bad lighting here. I don't even know what to do. That's slightly better. Okay, so this yarn, which is an, another indigo based color, and this is in the color weight teal, number 138. And it's slightly tonal, and I thought either these two would go really nicely together, or the two of them would go nicely together, or all three, <laughs> three color shawl perhaps. So I got that. Um, I'm really sorry that this color representation is so terrible. This is just shameful. Um, and then at the cashmere goat, I think, I got this sock yarn or fingering weight yarn. My first hand dyed yarn ever beyond the Swans Island, I guess. Um, or like indeed hand dyed. And this is, this is Frolicking, Frolicking Feet hand painted yarn by Dove Roving Yarns. And um, this is main made. And it's in their colorway, all that glitters. So it's 100% domestic superwash merino, fingering weight yarn, uh, 480 yards. This is really, really yummy feeling yarn. Um, and uh, I thought that this would also go really well with any of the colors of the other three that I showed you. Maybe not those two together, but certainly the green. Oh, sorry, the, the sun just came out a little bit more. Or the purple, no, the purple you really can't see. Like these three together are actually really pretty because this yarn has purples in it, it has golds, it has greens. Um, it's really, really pretty, really pretty. And really soft. So um, that's the yarn. Uh, what time are we at? 38 minutes. So one last thing I wanted to show you that I got in Maine just because I don't know, maybe you like it. Now it's suddenly brighter after I've shown you all the important things. Can you see the purple any better? A little bit. There you go, it doesn't look black, but that is, once again, totally saturated. These are all like sort of slightly grayed out colors. Anyway, so in one of the stores that I went to, I got a couple wooden spoons. Um, I feel a little bit silly talking about wooden spoons, but you know. This is my life. Um, I really like cooking with wooden spoons because one of my cookware sets, I have two, um, you can't use any metal in it. So it's, you can really only use like silicone or plastic or wood. And I have a wooden spoon, but I haven't really treated it well. And I've had it for uh, almost five years, four years. And uh, it's starting to crack. It's not doing so well. So I saw these local carved wooden spoons in a store that we were at and I picked them up and they were not expensive they were like 12 13 14 dollars something around there I bought two of them one was sort of just like a generic kind of wooden spoon I'm not going to show that to you but this one I thought was really cool so I wanted to show you oh sorry that was a spoon um I had been looking up wooden spoons on Etsy for a really long time so when I saw these I was like I'm getting them um so this is one of the spoons that I got. And what I really like about it is that, you know, when you're gonna purchase a souvenir, I, I really don't like souvenir stores that you find pretty much anywhere you go that are touristy, where it's just like, 
everything is plastered with the same, it all looks the same. You could have gotten it at 15 different stores. Um, when I get a souvenir, I want to get something. And I'm not a souvenir person at all, but I want to get something that's a little bit more personalized. So I thought this was really cool. So the person that makes this spoon um, carved in, I guess this is burned in, um, information about it, kind of. So this is a main wood spoon. I guess that's the number 30116 Camden. And I'm guessing that's their initials. So I thought that was really cool, you know, and then what that means is that any time that I cook with this, and cooking's not my favorite task, I can see that and know where it's from and think of the maker and be reminded of, you know, that time that I spent on vacation. So I wanted to show that to you because, I don't know, I just, I love seeing things that other makers make and um, I just love that kind of special touch. Uh, the other one doesn't have any engraving, so it just kind of looks like a regular spoon I could have gotten in it at any kind of store. But I will not forget that that's from Maine, and I just think that's cool. Just really personalized. And I'd love to be able to do something like this. Um, carving, so cool. So that's it. That's my episode. Um, I hope that this wasn't too rambly. I hope that this lighting is not so terrible and you were able to bear with me. And um, thanks so much for watching. It's been wonderful spending time with you. And I uh, hope to chat with you down below in the comments. All right, take care. Bye. Hey, just wanted to see if I can try to add this in at the end. Um, just wanted to say a couple things. First of all, here's Lucy for hanging out on the couch. Um, first of all, one thing I really liked about this pattern, I'm sorry, it's a little bit more pattern talk, if that's okay, is that you could choose your own neckline. Um, the pattern, the way that it is only one, um, one piece that you have to create is that it's the same neckline for front and back. So you sew the whole shirt together and then you cut out the front neckline. So, and she gives you instructions how to do that. And so basically what that means is that you can choose how scooped you want. You can make it super scooped, you can make it more of a boat neck, which is what I did and it looks kind of funny because I'm laying down. Um, and I really liked that. Um, but I did want to mention a little bit about Maine. If you're interested, you can continue watching. My hair looks crazy now because I had taken it down and put it back up when I decided to turn this on. Um, so what I wanted to say was... We went to, we stayed in the Midcoast area, which I'd highly recommend. Um, and a couple things that you may want to check out that we really, really liked that I hadn't done last year, if you're going to be in the area, is driving to the top of Mount Batty in Camden um, and going to the giant stairs in Harp's Wells, Harp Wells Peninsula. There's some pictures of that on my Instagram. I think at least one of those things if you want to check that out but uh, we had a really good time I took a lot of pictures <laughs> which um, I'm starting to slowly go through and uh, yeah so if you're interested in a little bit more about that feel free to comment or message me hopefully I can add this to the end <laughs> Bye.